It's so good to know that there is already a worldwide or global community of people living together in an empowered and ex exalted way. A way of um, supporting each other which is completely different than what I knew before. You know, it redefined for me friendship and it redefined for me leadership, society in general. I was quite, when I met the training, which was almost six years ago, I was quite like, okay, how long can I continue living like that? Like, it's, it's too weird. And the things we are doing to each other and the way we communicate with each other, I don't want it. I don't want it anymore. It really reached to a point of exhaustion, you can say, or feeling helpless. Well, what, how do we want to continue? How do I want to continue? First of all, it was, I needed to start with myself. How do I deal with all the barrage of negativity that, that I have day and night since I was born? Anxiety, depression, all the things you shouldn't talk about, here we talk about them. Anxiety, depression, loneliness, awkwardness, social awkwardness, desire, and uh, other very interesting things. So before we might have thought, like myself, oh, it's just me and I shouldn't show it to anyone. I should be always stable, powerful and strong, like a man should be, right? So I shouldn't say, talk about social anxiety, for example, in front of uh, one person, let alone 120 people. And in the reality of balanced view, in reality of opening intelligence, we see that everything is allowed to be as it is. And there's a great force of normalization of all data, all of our experiences, all the things I felt so ashamed about, they were clarified in one open meeting or in few short moments or talking or writing to my trainer or asking a question in an open meeting like, what should I do if I feel depressed in the morning? And then you see a crowd of people just nodding like that. Oh my God, like for 20 something years, I thought it's only me. And now I see uh, so many people agreeing that it's a human experience to feel all kinds of things. And the stupid aim of trying to have only positive data is stupid. <laughs> Sorry, dear friends who are attempting to have only positive data. It's stupid in a way because it doesn't work. So we have to come to a conclusion, you know, in our own experience where, okay, tried it a million times, didn't provide a result, why, why will it do it now? So common sense is included as well. Common sense to see that trying to, what is the conventional approach? What is the conventional approach of data? reification, giving an independent nature to our thoughts and emotions. It means when something that you don't like arise, you choose to either indulge it, like that was one of my past time, I was occupied, you can say. I was thinking about my data, why, why did, mm, interesting, why did it come right now and why, why do I feel it again? It's probably to blame someone, let's see who I can blame today and uh, parents. Sorry, dear parents, but I blamed you a lot. And uh, or blame my, my culture, where I come from, the weather, really weird things. All of you, of course, <laughs> society and politicians. Okay, <laughs> indulging really provided so much uh, nothing, yeah? So I tried that a lot and I was like, okay, for how long? My first open meeting to Balance View was, and I heard you don't need to analyze yourself and let everything be as it is, I was raging. Uh, that was my occupation. I don't even call it a job. I was occupied. I was oppressed. I chose to oppress myself. And I didn't reach any conclusion. There were many theories along the way, yeah? Like there's no... Yeah. And you probably read the same books or similar takes on that. So I won't go there. It's boring. And then also we can replace our data. So I tried it for a while. Like if I had negative data, for example, feeling a panic attack in front of many people, Oh, wow, it's happening right now. Um, I used to th think, uh, no, I shouldn't have it. Again, I'm a man, I'm an Israeli, I'm, I'm powerful and I have a good voice. So, <laughs> again, dampening down this dynamic energy of benefit. Data, fighting with data, fighting with space, thinking that life will be better if I really try hard. So you can try that, uh, avoiding. Uh, replacing and then avoiding, like, no, shouldn't feel that. What was it? Couldn't hear. 
you know, like internally things are going, mm -mm, no, uh oh. <laughs> oh, in term, and there are very elaborate practices that support you to, to, to neutralize your life uh, satisfaction and flourishing. Amazing concepts and ideas that really they serve to neutralize all of your dynamic energy to be of benefit. Neutralize, <laughs> flat, boring. So, in, in these ways, I don't know, we are in Goa, in Arambol, many things are happening around. What we want to see, what I'm trying to say, that what we want to see is, in our own experience, what is available right now? Opening intelligence, stop thinking for a moment. All your amazing ideas will come back, so don't worry, we don't take your identity, your ideas. Y you can write books about them, but if you stop thinking for a moment, what remains, really? Check it in your own experience. And what remains, what you identified right now when you stop thinking, is also stable, pr spontaneously present, always on when you are thinking and, and doing all of your other things of, of sensing, emoting. This is the natural way to be. So when we re rely on data, I love the, I, I, as I came also to the point where I was like, Okay, India, I love you very much, but I want answers. You know, that was my quest coming to India. I want to know reality. So when I can, and I thought in India I'll find it, which I did, the balance view training, by the way. So I, I was like, okay, how long can I spend my time? And I saw in India many older people, like in the 50s and 60s, and, and, and I saw, wow, they, they, are, they dedicated them, their life to be to find reality and they, they can talk about reality but they have no clue. <laughs> I just knew it. I saw, I saw in them, in the way they acted, in the way they were uh, with themselves, in, with the shopkeepers. I said, wow, they can talk really elaborate concepts, you know, the mind and heart and, and all of these things. But what about when it comes to everyday life? Like when you want to relate to the chai wala or the coconut wala or, or your girlfriend, what to do then? So with the proper education in the nature of mind, having the support structure, what I saw that all the brilliant ideas, I could put them aside for a moment and then I started to test in my own experience, taking short moments when things got heated, for example. So in intimate <coughs> relationship, ah, oh, that's such a good place, intimate relationship. We assume that intimate relationships should include only positive data. Love, butterflies, pink candles, and I don't know, some of you might be a bit kinky, so it depends. But you know, it's like, <laughs> this is kind of the, the square that we really, two people are trying to push themselves in and will be just like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, I, I heard there's also a Goan story about uh, an Indian Romeo and Juliet. There's a place where people can go and fall in love. And, but, when you check it in your own reality, how many negative data you have about your beautiful partner that you are meant to be together and only love each other. When I was a teenager, I was like telling the few girlfriends I had, I told them, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stay together at night and in the morning I might come up, uh, there might be a feeling of me wanting to be alone, so I will tell you to go away. Because I thought that all, all I have to see is my data and that was my decision making, my reference point, my ideas about, oh, wait, wait, oh, oh yeah, you should go away, oh wait, wait, I'm angry now. But when we allow complete perceptual openness, which is your default, you know, like we have settings on a, on a phone or a computer, there's a default setting in each human being, an app a program, a software of complete openness and understanding in all moments, complete perceptual openness. Everything that is occurring within this system of ours, this intelligent system, is data, is inseparable from it. It's like light appearances, benefit appearances, inseparable, like the color blue in the sky. Our mind is vast and expansive like the sky, and everything that appears within it is just the same, is made of the same, pure perfection. So with your partner, what I chose, not with your partner, with my partner, <laughs> <laughs> I chose to, and I was encouraged by the four mainstays, it was like, take responsibility. Okay. And what does it mean? True honesty, for example, was a section that you read in, in Empowerment 8, and it's amazing. For me, it was life-changing. 
true honesty. I thought that true honesty means that you, because you chose to be next to me, you'll know everything about me, whether you want it or not. And for sure, my partner, she was a hostage of my ups and downs because she chose to be with me. And I'm so honest. So you can see how much time spent, and I really, I don't exaggerate it, we spent lots of time talking about me. <laughs> lots of time. Skype calls, Google Hangout, no, it was before Google Hangout. Skype calls, and you know, all about me, 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 and comparing our data, your data is better than mine, let's exchange a bit. And oh God, so boring. And. Uh, and then when, when all the things came up in the beginning and I was encouraged to see the true honesty is really clarifying, penetrating, blowing open my data streams, seeing them as reality rather than as the confused label of what they mean, then we could communicate very differently. And one example was that I woke up with the usual uh, depression, I have a morning depression syndrome. MDS, probably somebody wrote volumes about that. So. I woke up in the morning and then I saw, okay, she's lying there. Soon I wait for her to wake up. Soon I'm going to tell her about that, you know, <laughs> and why she needs to change in order for me not to feel this way. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and, then, and then instead I was so inspired by what I heard from the trainers and the amazing community. You know, we have an amazing community. I know community pushes many, many people's button, but at one point you'll reach your point. This is amazing what we are creating here. You might be cynical and sarcastic as I was, but this resolves after. <laughs> Depends on you. So, and then with, uh, I chose to say, okay, instead I'll take short moments. And I was boiling inside, you know, I wanted to go into these conversations because this is what I thought will provide relief. And this is what I thought the box of relating. Yeah, she needs to know everything about me. And that's how we'll be the best couple in the world. And then with short moments, I saw, okay, <laughs> that's really cool. She doesn't have to be a victim of my data and I choose to empower myself. So, you know, when you have these big things jumping on you, it seems in the beginning like that, like big dynamic energy, big life decisions, anger, sexual desire, and all, all the best and gold things in life, then it's an amazing opportunity to simply let it be as it is. And it's so scary with the big things I know from my experience because you, you think you lose it or you will, will, will not know what to do or you'll walk in, in the streets of Arambo like some of the people you see here because you don't, you know, everything is data. But what you start to see that while allowing everything to be as it is, this comprehensive intelligence is also allowed to be as it is. So while data is appearing, shining forth, there is amazing wisdom to know what to do. And I can't explain it. I gave may maybe 200 open meetings already, or even more, and I still can't explain the logic of it. So sorry if you're trying to understand it logically, I won't be the person to support you in that. But instinctively, what we start to see is that we are wise and intelligent, regardless of the appearances, regardless of the data. And you can have any data you want, so that's already great. You know, you don't need to exchange it, wait for better data, or a lifetime where you'll have better data to rest with. Whatever is occurring for you right now, it might be positive, neutral, or negative, like self-hatred. How amazing it is, huh? really, from open intelligence. Amazing. I hate myself. Wow, big deal. <laughs> You know, I, I share it from my own experience, because while it was in the beginning, oh, I need to change it, I need to go to a psychologist, for sure psychologists will help me to go out of it, or do meditation, or take lots of drugs until I forget about it. To just take a short moment, it's, it hel it's healthy, it's cost-effective, <laughs> and it's beneficial. F so for me, it's kind of, okay, <laughs> I might try that. Short moments repeated many times and you just get, to get used to the vibe of benefit in every moment. And then self-hatred really becomes a, something you can relate to people the way they live for mirification. But for you, the, sh the sun of open intelligence already started to outshine this data stream. Otherwise, you wouldn't ask it in front of so many people. So if you are tired, fed up, you are so, you're really in, the great, in a great place. 
if you want to be of benefit to all, in Balanced View we provide all the tools to support you to get to know your innate strengths, gifts and talents. What are they, really? Did you come to this life in order to think about your problems and issues and try to fix yourself and try to find one or two people to connect with and call it a life? Or do you want to really enjoy all of your strengths, gifts and talents, know them, you know, share it wildly with everyone, be a benefit creator as we are meant to live. You know, that's how we are meant to live. And for me, I'm so grateful for the formula of the Four Mainstays because I, I feel that it's not only, you know, before when, when I traveled in India and even before it was like, okay, it's by myself. I need to find the answers. It's me. And w when I'll reach this state, great. Never reach there. <laughs> now we do it with a community of friends community of friends who are doing the same thing, relying on opening intelligence. And talk with the people here in the community and see, ask them how is that, how, how, how is it going for them? Their daily life, living from complete stability, not ideas about stability, but complete stability. Meaning that you always know what to rely on and it's just constant, spontaneous recognition, whether you want it or not. And you do want it, I know. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. And from there, decision-making are uh, easy. Like when I was young, I didn't know, should I go to the party? Should I kiss the girl? Should I not kiss her? Should I drink this really cheap uh, vodka in Tel Aviv? Or should I, you know, very big decisions. <laughs> from opening intelligence, the, um, I know it also can be scary for some antidotes. They drop away, you know. But still, we can enjoy and do whatever we want to do from the perspective that we are powerful, that we are beneficial, and that we can share life together with other people and, and be of great uh, support and serve everyone around us. So this is the understanding. And in the way, you'll see much about yourself that you haven't seen before. All the things you didn't want to see, for those of you who will stay and, and re explore the Four Mainstays, you'll see about things about yourself that will be shocking. Even if you went to workshops galore and, and analyzed yourself to death, you will see things about yourself that you think, I'm the, the worst person in the world and I can't believe they allow me to be here. <laughs> Again, sharing my own direct experience. But when I share these things with the group and clarify them, what I found is I, I'm accepted. I belong. I belong to the human race. I'm no longer fighting with the human race. I'm no longer fighting with myself or with society. I just know. This is how we carry our life with great dignity. Dignity and benefit. So this is a simple choice in every moment. Ideas, many. <laughs> many ideas. One simple instinctive recognition that can repeat it many times and have all of the support that is needed to make it obvious for you, that's another choice. It's a completely different lifestyle. So. Check it in your own experience. Check it. I know many of you already, uh, I need sunglasses when I look at you. You are shining, but for everyone who is inspired, you just check it and see. <laughs>